Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 352. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Well, sweetheart, I'm reminded this morning of how much God's done in our lives to where I can say you're the love of my life and you can say that and God's given us a yeah I used to be the pain in your <laughs> in your dairy here but hey well I was the pain in yours too but God um, works miracles well it was definitely a miracle if you guys could have seen the state of our marriage years ago and and uh oh the old enemy was just thumping our heads all the time um but praise God he made a way for us and and uh, brought healing and deliverance. And so here we are, and I'm so happy to be talking to all our friends, our partners in the ministry. You guys are so great. We couldn't, that's that's one of the things that just encourages me so much, that God has blessed us with the greatest partners on the earth, yes. greatest intercessors. And uh, I know he's got a plan. He doesn't do something for no reason. He's He's got a plan that he's going to do at these conferences that we're having. And oh, I got um, I got excited yesterday. I was over there walking and praying, and and uh, they're starting to install the cabinets in the kitchen. Yay! And yeah, I yay. saw parts of them. And they were they were starting to set the cabinets in the bathrooms and stuff. And so that's that's and and then the um, one guy was prepping everything in the in the uh, fellowship hall for painting all the walls and all that. So they paint up the walls. They put the ceiling in. We're good to go. That's and, right. And thank God, thank you guys so much, all all of our uh, contributors to to the ministry. You know, we've got that money set aside now. And so it's just, it's a, God always exceeds my expectations, always. He does. I can't wait till we can start ordering chairs and tables. And, and it'll be go, the fun part. <laughs> then I can call that, that uh, the company that we had um, uh, do look at everything to put in the audio individual and uh, I'm I'm excited to see how they're going to put all that in and and stuff and and then figure out how to work the equipment so that we can uh, we can film the conferences. It's, yeah. it's exciting. We got the uh, paper towel dispensers for the restrooms and everything's just going as planned. So thank God for that. Um, we've been in prayer for the survivors and the families that lost loved ones in these shootings. It's yes. The um, dangers are everywhere, aren't they? They are, and I, I, I think in the days ahead, learning to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit uh, is is going to be essential for the safety of the remnant. That uh, there are people uh, in society that just um, gravitate toward hate. I mean, they they need Jesus with all their heart, but they they have, they gravitate for hate for and Mary. That I, I think one of the most ridiculous things on the planet, as far as I'm concerned is hating somebody because of the color of their skin mm -hmm. or well, that they're a little different. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's uh, That's how you know it comes from the kingdom of darkness. One of the, the key things is is confusion. They're confused about reality, <laughs> you know, thinking that somebody's skin color makes a difference in the pro it just It just blows my mind. And, and We need to pray for that whole community. I know the, the whole thing was, was traumatic. Uh, for that entire community up there in New York. Oh, it had to be in all the different places. There were several of them this yeah, last one, weekend. One was out in California, and it was uh, Taiwanese, and I, I guess uh, maybe this the, the man that was the shooter was perhaps of Chinese origin. I, I'm, I'm not sure. It's just hard to tell the truth, guys, because our media twists so many things. It, you know, you probably have to dig some to find out the truth on these things. Um, but the good news is, is that God is exposing everything right now. They're having a, a um, holding a UFA, UFO hearing in Congress today, first in 50 years. And our friend L.A. Marzulli always says that, you know, this is an indicator they're getting closer to the reveal. Yes. And I agree with him. I think that, that um, they're going to say that they came and, and there are creators um, I've always said this uh, because uh, it's the only thing that makes sense to me. You know, if you think of 
of the most charismatic person you've ever known, maybe a rock star. Or, uh, I know people, there was a little bit of that with Barack Obama. I could see it. It was, it was like people were just drawn to him. Um, but for the Antichrist to pull off what he's going to pull off, he's going to have to have some supernatural ability to just draw people, like put them in a spell and, you know, like a moth to a flame. And I've always wondered if, if the Antichrist isn't going to say he's, he came from, from another world. You know, in the interview, you know, the interview I did yesterday with uh, Dr. Doug Hemp with his new book on, uh, on corrupting the imagery, he postulated something I had never thought of. And it, it almost sounds like it's out of a sci-fi movie, but it's right from the Bible. You have the two witnesses show up. Okay. Now they basically terrorize evil for three and a half years that they, they're moving in supernatural power. They're beginning to inspire all these believers to move in supernatural power that they can call down plagues, Mary, the Bible says, as they will. That with all of our technology that we have today, that there is absolutely nothing any military can do to stop them. Okay. And so it's throwing the new world order into crisis. And so they're looking for somebody that has greater technology and greater power What a window of opportunity for the UFOs to show Mm -hmm. up and say, let us take care of them. And the Bible says that, you know, they, that they, um, that there's going to be a blending of, of a Satan with what we call the son of perdition, the antichrist, where he becomes something other and he defeats them for three and a half days. And then they resurrect. But uh, you, you, you can see how that, the uh, the enemy is is using these things, and uh, Doug said something I thought was really really interesting. He says that Lucifer doesn't know when the curtain's getting ready to come up, but man, can he set the stage? Mm. And that's exactly what he's doing today, and that that's why the remnant are so important. I I think that guys, we need to learn how to walk in kingdom. We need to learn how to. We need to be ready to give an answer when these things start showing up, pointing back to the Word of God and showing them the reality of what everyone has missed, of, of that these things, these are not aliens from a, a faraway galaxy, that they have always been right here and that they're fallen and they, they, have, they have rebelled against the Creator. Well, and I think without the truth of the Nephilim and uh, where the giants came from and all and of that, watchers, without yeah. that element, I think that, uh, it would have been p- impossible to fight that that whole scenario because they're going to come and say, well, you know, this is why like all all the uh, ancient myths and things are all sort of the same. You know, that we would come in contact with humans and and they and they would. I think a lot of people are going to buy it. Yeah, I think unless you are so grounded in the truth. Uh, of Almighty God of His Kingdom, I think that it would be easily to sway people, especially because. You're going to see it right in front of your eyes. They're going to display this right in front of your eyes, which is why one of the reasons I believe that God's raising up people that are going to flow in miracle work and power for His kingdom. Absolutely. You know, they had an interesting uh, report. Uh, it was by the Telegraph newspaper. Research by Stanford shows that infusing cerebrospinal fluid of young mice into old mice improves brain function, opening the door for similar applications to humans. It says the Stanford team infused fluid from 10-week-old mice into the brains of 18-month-old mice over seven days and found that older mice were better at remembering to associate a small electric shock with a noise and flashing light. Doesn't that just bother you? You know, even if, if it's a mouse, uh, I just have trouble with people torturing it, even these little animals. Uh, it says closer examination showed the fluid had woken up processes which regenerate neurons and myelin, the fatty material that protects nerve cells within the hippocampus, the memory center of the brain. And they were talking about how, um, you know, that this could lead to where uh, infusions from youth, from babies and things like that, could make people younger. And I think think there's truth to this, Um, not only in the physical sense of what they're talking about, because I've experienced that, you know, as I was getting healing, and the parts of your brain that are blocked would come into the consciousness. The brain is still in some kind of a, a state, state to where you don't feel old. 
you know, like, and then I could tell when I'd switch back because then I felt like a 65 year old or 60 year old, whatever I was at the time. Um, and, and it was a different difference. And it, it may be that just your brain has the ability, um, to have that fluid there that, that to where you, you have, um, your brain doesn't sense the pain, you know, like, like a younger person doesn't have aches and pains and things like that. And I, I was thinking about that because, you know, they've talked so much about these people that will drink the blood of babies. And, um, this is supposed to give them like eternal life. And, and I think that there's probably some physical truth to what they're talking about. I, I don't think it's just drinking the blood. I think there's other aspects. Confusing and all kinds of but, stuff. Yeah. But there's a spiritual aspect because I have known um, people that are older that sometimes you'll see them and they, and they look much younger. And I think it's because of some of this, the witchcraft and, and all of that stuff that they do. That's why I'm so um, cautious about any kind of, thing that you'd buy that's like a face cream or something, I'm always thinking, man, wouldn't that be the perfect thing for them to take something and put aborted baby cells in or something to try to get people youthful. And I'm not coming against people that use that stuff. It's just it's just a conviction of mine. And that's why I just use like avocado oil and coconut oil and things, you know, when my skin's dry. Um, I'm not that worried about looking old either. I mean, we, we've grown old together, and I, I love your gray hair. <laughs> Your wrinkles, what few you have, don't bother me. You've, I have uh, more you, wrinkles than you You were do. waiting for a long time for my gray hair to come in. So. Yes, I do. I love you. <laughs> uh, so it do, it doesn't bother me, um, but I, I think there are a lot of people, it just it really bothers them looking older. And to me, it's just, I, I'm just glad I got to a place where I look like a grandma because um, years ago, I, I always had this thought that if I if I can get to the age of a grandma, things are going to be better for me, and they were. That's when I started getting getting healed, um, and so I that doesn't bother me. But I I think we're going to have to be really prayerful over things that we buy, and because I think they're going to do this. I think they're going to try to offer people eternal life through their means, and the only eternity you have is with Almighty God. That's right. And we, I've, I've got a, a new body waiting on me that one day I get a glorified body that's never going to grow old. It's never going to need Ben Gay or, or <laughs> that's, Blue Emu that's or That's what I'm looking else. for. Me I'm not too. looking for a younger looking body. I'm looking for a younger feeling body. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nobody wants to ache. Um, I tell you what, I one thing that, that I am praying about for myself and asking God for healing because it's something I did to myself um, years ago. When I worked, um, I wore high heels all the time, and that shortens that, um, you know, the tendons and all that muscle structure around your heel to where then if you ever start wearing flats, that's kind of shrunk up, and boy, it'll it'll cause tearing off the bottom of your heel, and I've struggled with that ever since I quit quit wearing heels, and I still can walk much better if I have like about an inch heel on there, but I just like going barefoot. <laughs> I'm an old country girl, and uh, so I've been praying that God would help. Well, you look God good in your help. tennis shoes. I like well, I mean, that's, that's some of the things that nobody tells you. Nobody yeah. tells you, you know, if you wear heels, your ankles are going to look better, but one of these days, you're not going to feel so good walking barefoot. You know, there's so many things that we do uh, just to look better, <laughs> and that's, you know, er, my whole life – that's been the central focus of everything around me is is you got to look good that's that's like that's it that's the ultimate nobody looks for anything else you know we were taught don't have to have any character heart no you just, no you just you just, just look for who looks dressing. good and you got to look good and and there's nothing wrong with looking good i'll tell you that but it sure makes for a shallow existence well i want to i just want to go on record that i've got a woman that not only looks good but she's got a good heart well, I would rather have that yep. than anything. I'm so so thankful that God protected my heart through and, the years. And, and she does look good in combat boots, too, by the way. Hey, I'd wear them. <laughs> I keep on trying to buy you camouflage when we're at what, what Walmart. He around. does. He's always trying to get camouflage because I've always liked that, but I'm a little old for it now, sweetie. Oh, uh, no, you're no, not. No, it only looks good on young people. <laughs> I wear camouflage. Well, but men, it's different. Oh, well, we can talk another time about fashion sense, <laughs> like I've got any. Um, well, let's get back to our what we're talking about here. You know, this is um, 
this is a time of exposure, and that should be apparent to everybody right now. There's a truth explosion going on, and God is revealing all of these things so that it can be judged. There, there is going to be a judgment on wickedness, and and we're going to see it in the churches too. We're yeah. going to see. Well, it's not going to be, you know, wondering for very much longer who's who. It's going to be exposed. I think the blinders are going to come off of all eyes, because I think it's it's been a witchcraft spell over all of us, and I think God's just breaking everything down. He's just going to take it down to nothing. And and I knew years ago when God told me He was going to take back America, that it was going to be. There's going to be a lot of tearing down involved, and that's that's hard to think about. But you know this this place was was built on Freemasonry stuff. The buildings, it's all it's pagan stuff, and so you you know God's going to shake things up. That's just all there is to it. You can't have something um, unless there's a good foundation there to build on, and and not all this junk on it. And so. I think that we're in a great time of shaking. There's no doubt about that. But I believe that we are getting ready to see one of the greatest moves of God that's ever been. Uh, and we have been getting reports of breakthroughs, um, people's personal lives. Oh, and thank so you, exciting. thank you for that encouragement, guys. We we need it so we can keep on going and keep on praying. Um, so encouraging. But I was um, what kept coming to me the as in my thoughts as I was praying this last week was. Um, I kept I kept hearing the the benefits of being sons and daughters, benefits of joint heirs with Jesus, and I thought, well, we probably need to look at that. Um, Romans eight seventeen says, uh, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. And you know, there's there's no such thing as being a child of God and not going through some suffering. No. It's it's going to happen, but one uh, one of the things that uh, it said in an article I was reading as I was looking up things, it says we came from a state of suffering to beneficiaries of the kingdom, and I thought, boy, that's that's a good way of looking at that. We because if you're in if you before you're saved, you're in a, a state of sin, which brings suffering, and so if you look at it like that, man, we're We've been delivered from a lot of that suffering. Um, but I, th- I thought we needed to look at the blessings of being sons and daughters and joint heirs here on earth and then in eternity, obviously. That's that's where the greatest blessing is, is we get to be in his kingdom manifested here one day. Yeah. And you know, to a great degree, we're walking in the kingdom now, and, and the inheritance that we have from him is the kingdom. Mm-hmm. It's salvation. It's the kingdom. Uh, and, you know, the sad part is we have, uh, to a, a great degree, when you look historically here in America, we have, we, have been, we have been taught, let's say if you were raised Baptist, you were taught how to walk in the Baptist denomination that you're with, not in kingdom, but that denomination, and whether it's Pentecostal or whatever. But uh, I remember never hearing about kingdom unless it was in the context of the millennial reign. There was never anything about kingdom now that, we, we, that we're, we're walking. Every, you know, guys, every time somebody is saved, that's a manifestation of the kingdom. Every time that we have an answer to prayer, that's a manifestation of the kingdom. That's right. Whenever we're, we're going through a hard time in, in um, yeah, let's see, I've got it here in, In uh, Romans fourteen seventeen, it says, "For the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, uh, or eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit." And when you're in a situation that you have peace that passes all understanding, when you're going through a hard time, yet God touches you uh, in in the midst of that, and you have peace, that is a manifestation of the kingdom of God. Every time that somebody is healed. That's a manifestation of the kingdom of God. Jesus taught his disciples, say, listen, when you go and you cast out devils and you heal the sick, what you're supposed to tell them is that the kingdom of God has just come near you. And so it, for, the, for those that are lost, when we begin moving in the power of the kingdom and, and we pray for somebody and they're, and they're healed or they're delivered, we're to say, listen, 
This, this was just a taste. This was just a drive-by, if you will, of the kingdom of God. Do you want on in? Do you want to yeah. go ahead and come into the kingdom? And the only way to come into the kingdom is through Jesus Christ. That's the only way to come into the kingdom. Yeah, that's right. Well, you imagine like if you were an orphan in a third world country and you were adopted by somebody in the United States and brought here, imagine the difference of the benefits. You oh, know, yeah. e- many, many countries, even the poorest people in the United States look wealthy to them because of the of their surroundings and the, you know, the wages and, and different things. And sometimes I just don't think we grasp what it's like to be a son and a daughter and a joint heir with Jesus. Because if we did, we would we'd have to look at all of uh, all of the things that the Bible says is there and and believe it for our lives. I remember years ago I got to uh, be in a conference with Dr. Michael Sh- uh, Shreve, and he's the one that used to be a, a, his testimony was that he was a big yoga master and all this stuff, and he got saved, and, and he's really a neat guy. I just, I just really enjoyed the time I was with him. Uh, and a lot of these books, he, he began writing on our divine inheritance and our inheritance in Christ. And I think, you know, it's like, okay, one book will be enough. No, I, I think he ended up writing like nine in that series. And a lot of them are in print right now, and I hope he brings them back. But when, when he began examining everything the Bible says was a part of our inheritance, can you imagine, Mary, writing a nine-book series just covering what we have in Christ? Mm, well, I, I, I think that we have not even begun as, as a whole in the body. I, I remember when um, the last time I was on Skywatch TV, and I, I think they were expecting a different answer, but they, they, I was asked, you know, what level of authority – on a scale of one to ten, what level of authority do you think the body of Christ is moving in right now that we that we have available to us? And I said two, and that threw them off. And I think it I think it's because we cannot comprehend walking in the same power that we see in the Book of Acts. Somehow or another, we have thinking. Well, that was that was Bible times, and and that was at just at the very beginning. And guys, that was for our example. We, we, we see the manifestation of the kingdom through the ministry of Elijah, of Elisha, of Moses, uh, of, of all the, the, the great men of God that moved in the power of God. We, we see it in the lives of the apostles. We see it in the lives all, all throughout the word of God. And all of them are example for us to raise our expectation. I, I think that we, you know, there, there was a time... Mary, believe it or not, in the world, in, that you know they they said that the four minute mile could not be broken. In fact, they even had doctors uh, come out and say that the human heart will explode if you go run faster than a four minute mile. Okay, and it could never be done, never be done. One day, a guy did it, and you think, well, man, that was an oddity. No, within a matter of weeks, it was broken again and again and again because people realized that barrier, that four-minute mile, could be broken. That's right. We, we, the devil has put us into this box where we don't understand our inheritance. We don't understand really who we are in Christ. We don't understand how the kingdom of God functions, and I think a lot of it's because we've done away with the commandments and a lot of different things. But he has really reduced our ability to see what the kingdom is, and if you can't see it, you can't believe for it. The Bible says that hope is the substance, the faith is the substance of hope. Okay, that hope is is the picture that you have on the inside of you. Okay, you know, it's like when we were buying, getting ready to buy this house a long, long time ago. You began decorating it on the inside of your head before we ever signed the contract. That was the hope because you, you saw the building just like the building over in, in Diggins, you're, you're, you and Steph are already beginning to decorate it in your head. I, I can see the wheels turning, and I'm excited to, to see that. But see, that's the hope building so that it can be brought into reality. When we read the Word of God and we begin to read about how that they moved in the supernatural power of God, it's supposed to build within us the hope of us moving in that same level of power. Mm-hmm. 
And I, I think that part of what God is doing right now is he is beginning to change our understanding, changing our paradigm, because the, the enemy has so pressed us down that we don't even begin to, uh, it, it's almost like when the, the uh, 12 spies went into, into, the, into the promised land, 10 of them came back and God called it an evil report and they said, we're grasshoppers in our own sight. Well, when you really find out what was going on on the other side of the river, everybody was freaking out that these Israelites that just brought down Egypt had come and they were freaking out saying, they're going to come here too, they're going to get us, you know, kind of thing. But to most of the Israelites, they didn't see who they were in God. They didn't see yeah, that, that God right. was with them. You know, Joshua and Caleb did. Joshua and Caleb says, man, we're more than able to take all this. They, they understood. Yeah. And I think that God is getting ready to release a Joshua and Caleb anointing uh, in, in this generation yeah, because we're going to start seeing who we really are in Christ mm -hmm. and to see what it means to move both because the kingdom of God is not meat, meat, eating and drinking, but righteousness. Now that word righteousness not only means to move in biblical righteousness, it means justice. That word, the kingdom of God is to bring justice and it's to bring supernatural peace. And it is to bring joy of the Holy Spirit so that your joy is not in what you have. It's not in materialism. It's in your relationship with God. And it's in moving in the kingdom and, and, and seeing God change hearts and lives. Mary, there are things that money cannot buy. How many millionaires over the years have, have committed suicide? Money can't buy it. Then they're no. miserable and they're afraid. But... I've I've seen people marry in Africa, and and this one this one story always goes back. I I, I I think of it that this woman had a little hut with a dirt floor, and she was ecstatically praising God because God had given her a broom. She found joy. Now most people in America will look at that and say, oh, "Guys, the joy comes when we pray." God answers prayer. Jesus said, listen, whatever you ask in my name, I will do Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'll do it. That your joy may be full. It's having the joy and, and, and seeing God move and changing lives. That's the kingdom. And Mary, he can use every single one of us. We've got to raise our expectations. We've got to realize absolutely who we are in Christ and, and learn to yield to that. Not to the image the devil tries to give us as somebody that's defeated and in bondage and that can't do anything. Jesus set us free from that. Mm -hmm. The day that we got saved, we were set free from that, yet we still see ourselves as a grasshopper when God has called us to be giant killers. Yeah, I believe that. Well, and you know, um, I think a lot of people just think the Old Testament, you don't even mess with that, you know, just deal with the New Testament and and because we were grafted in, everything that's in the blessing part of chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, that's, that's still in effect for us. Oh, yeah. And it's, I'm just going to read it real quick. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. And that's part of it, <laughs> which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And look at where the United States is right now. Yeah. We're not we're not lifted high, are we? No, we're not. <laughs> and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field, blessed shalt thou be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of the cattle, the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. You're not gonna run out of food, are you? Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and they'll flee before thee seven ways. And it just goes on and on, all of these, these wonderful treasures that are there. And we got grafted into that. So, so people just kind of leave this stuff off. But all of these things are so important. Well, not only were we grafted in, God stacked the deck in our, in our behalf because... Once you get saved, you can, you, you're now in a position to clearly hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. That part of what we call the Brit Hadashah, which is the, the basis for calling the New Testament the New Testament, is out of Jeremiah. And part of when he said, listen, I'm going to establish a new covenant and I'm going to write my commandments on your heart. 
So the commandments have been written on our heart as we read the word. All of a sudden, our, our brains are retrained to line themselves up to what God has written on our hearts. And God is saying, listen, I've set this thing up for you to be blessed. I've set this thing up for you to move in my kingdom power. And you just need to retrain your head to begin matching what I have done in your heart. That's why the study and the meditation of the word is so important. Otherwise, our head gets us into trouble. Our heart never does. Once you get saved, it's not your heart that's the problem. It's your head. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because the Holy Spirit is there living on the inside of you. He's, he's there writing the commandments of God on the inside of your heart. And he's saying, listen, I'm waiting for your head to come in line with what I'm doing in your heart so I can release my power. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move you that direction. I'm trying to get you to see who you are. I'm trying to get you to see wonderful things out of the word of God and to get you out of the slave mentality that the Pharaoh of this world has trained you in so that you can begin moving in my power and my purposes in the earth because I've got some folks for you to touch. I've got, I got, I got... You know, Mary, this, 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 have you ever looked at folks just going to Walmart? Just, you know, Walmart or whatever store when they're, when they're out shopping, you very rarely see smiles anymore. Oh, there, I think just people the, are going through some terrible times. Uh, just, just horrible, terrible things. And to, just to make a difference in somebody's life by, by just giving them a kind word or, or a smile could, could make the difference that day for them. Just being led by the Holy Spirit in what we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we should be a blessing looking for some place to happen. We should be a, 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 a thing of joy looking for some place to bring some joy, to bring, to bring a difference, to bring just a word of encouragement. Well, that's true. You know, if you were an heir um, here on the earth and you received an inheritance, you'd feel a responsibility and a loyalty to continue what you're responsible for. And we don't look at the kingdom of God that way. No. You know, we, we don't look at it, but we have a responsibility to proclaim the kingdom, to walk in kingdom power, and to pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we've got to change our mindset because I don't think we've got it all, the way, and I'm including me. I mean, I'm working on me, yeah. reading the scriptures about our authority, our victory, uh, because we're going to have to have that to come out of this shaking that's going on that's not even... It probably just getting started. Yeah, and your victory is not based upon your circumstances. No. Because when the kingdom goes into operation, it transforms circumstances in a heartbeat. Yeah, it does. And, you know, we've got to, There, I think God will raise up places even in the United States where there's, there's blessings flowing so that there are places where people, if they're in a rough place, can get to and, and, and be in the kingdom. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got lots of rain here in the Ozarks, uh, some points to flooding, but um, we I'd r always rather have the rain because you get in trouble with the drought, and we've got whole states that are in critical drought stage. And as long as you've got the rain, the sun shining, you can grow crops. And especially with, I, I noticed the other day, they said that India had stopped all of their wheat exports because they're saving it for India. And I, I know Ukraine was a, a where they grew wheat. And I, so I think it was like 10 or 15 percent of the high level wheat that they use for bread and stuff like that comes out of the Ukraine. And maybe even maybe well, it's, as high as 20%. I know that there's a lot of it for the yeah. world. And so um, you can grow wheat around here. It's not one of the crops that they've they've done for years and years. Um, they mostly just have, you know, hay and stuff and. Corn. raise cattle and corn and stuff Soybean, but yeah. um, but we could do it and so that's that's what I'm looking for for this time period because the shaking's going to continue because what's been seen so far is just a drop in the bucket you know the Durham investigation I think is is going to be revealing more and more they're bringing out more about what was done during the election um, I'm I'm thinking that that's going to be coming out more during the summer uh, so that people can have some truth to vote in the midterms. Um, that's just what God's doing right now. He is exposing the evil that they thought was hidden. Nobody's ever going to see it. Nobody's ever going to realize what we've done. Um, but the, their own, their own uh, police state, so to speak, where they've got these cameras everywhere, <laughs> is exposing them. You know, and so we've just got to hang on through this, guys, and not get discouraged. Um, 
I was looking, I constantly am seeing the groceries go up. The the pro- problems with the uh, baby formula, oh my word. I I can't even imagine what that's like for, for mothers that, you know, are having to drive and try to find baby formula. Um, I just, I think we're in one of those times that uh, it's very trying, no doubt about that. But this is the time we got to get in the Word and find yes. out what does it mean to be a son and a daughter of God? What oh, does absolutely. it mean to be a joint heir with oh, Christ? Yeah. You know, one well, of the neatest things, and this is out of Hebrews uh, chapter 9, uh, starting in verse 11. And it said, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and go- and goats and the ashes of heifers uh, sprinkling the unclean, sacrificing for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself up without spot to God, cleansing your consciousness from dead works, serving the living God? For this reason, and this is where you need to underline in your Bible, he is the mediator of the new covenant by the means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Underline that in your Bible. For where there is a test, uh, where there is a testament, therefore there is necessary uh, be the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. In other words, the it, it, it the will, the will and testament of Jesus was to give you the kingdom. Okay. To put that into force, he had to die for you to have the inheritance. Right. You cannot have an inheritance right, unless somebody dies. But what is so cool about what we have is the one who brought the kingdom, who died to give you the kingdom, resurrected from the dead so that he could administer the kingdom. You want to talk about somebody that has proved his worth. How many of us have, have heard truth. stories of, let's say, somebody that their, their grandparents or parents were millionaires and the guy that uh, was supposed to administer the trust or administer the, uh, uh, the will ends up taking a whole bunch of the money and all these different things and doesn't do what the, the people really wanted in the will? I mean, human history is full of that. God says, you know what? Not only am I going to bring it, and I'm going to die to enact it. I'm going to resurrect, and I'm alive, yeah. and I'm the one. Ruling Jesus and <laughs> is the one. He's ruling and reigning, and he is the mediator. He is the, he is the one that is enforcing his will and testament. That's right. And he's the one who has proven that he is worthy to do it. Well, that's right. And so, you know, and, and I, I tell people, I said, listen, you know, can you trust Jesus? There are nails in his hands. His side was pierced, and there's holes in his feet. He proved himself trustworthy. He's faithful, too. He is faithful to the very end. He and is faithful you know, for eternity. You know, probably people listening, Mike, that haven't ever had someone that cared for them or was loyal to them or that they could trust, but God's always faithful. He's always faithful. The Bible says he sticks closer than a brother. And and I believe as we all learn to walk in God's kingdom, to where it manifests on the earth, his will, and we're following that, I believe you'll be surrounded by people that will be faithful. Well, you know, do you ever see uh, kids fall into bad company and now the next thing you know they're, they're taking on bad company? Well, the reverse is true. You fall into good company. Yeah. Okay, and, makes you want to be a better person. <laughs> makes you want to be a better person, and and we were brought into a supernaturally wonderful family. That's right. Where Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, is our Father. And when we start paying attention to what the Father does, and and paying attention to what our Savior does, and and His Spirit is on the inside of us because the Spirit of adoption has been spoken over us. 
we start acting like the family that we now belong to, not like the family that used to hold us hostage. That's right. And next thing you know, we're, we're found faithful because he has proven himself faithful to us. And guys, he, he is faithful. Mary and I are here to give you a testimony that almighty God is faithful. We, we were in situations that if God had not been faithful, this ministry would have never been birthed because we'd have been dead back in the 90s. He's faithful. Yeah, and, and I mean, he he's faithful even when you're in a sinful state and don't know it. Yeah. I mean, he's watching out for you, you know, trying to make the path for you to salvation if you're not saved and deliverance if you're saved and can't walk in it. I mean, I look back so many times. I was telling uh, my grandkids this the other day, back when I was in Goofyville going to, to bars and and doing unsavory things, I tell you, I can look back and think there were situations that I would have walked right in and not thought a thing about it, and God just put a block. I mean, and I didn't know it at the time. Uh, a lot of times I felt rejection. I can remember I just I felt a lot of rejection, and looking back I thought, you know, that I think God just blocked that. He mm-hmm. just blocked it so I wouldn't go over a cliff and not be able to get back. Um, I think God's working in people's lives all around them. They just can't recognize it. I didn't recognize it back then. And sometimes, you know, he can he can cause you to be frustrated because your sin's wanting to take you one way, and God begins putting blocks, and next thing you know, you're getting frustrated. But you look back after God delivers you and, and say, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, Oh, thank you, God. And so, uh, God, guys, God is doing things, and I, I think he's waiting for us to really begin digging in the word to find out who we are. Because mm-hmm. you are not who the devil told you you were. That's true. And he's still telling people today yes. that there's something opposite of what God made them. Absolutely. And you know what? You have authority in Christ to question all of it mm-hmm. and say, devil, you're a liar. That's right. And it's important to, to speak it out loud, too. Oh, absolutely. Not just think it. Just speak it out loud. Declare it. Declare he's a liar, and it will break that cycle of him just beating your head in, you know, with thoughts. And uh, he tries to remind you of your past. He try he'll try anything. He tries to. I think he can even skew how you look. You know, I've seen beautiful people that that just thought that they were ugly. Yeah. You know, there's just there's a skewing going on. Um, I think some of the people that are are being lied to about the transgender. I think some of these young men are very masculine. I think that they've they've got a skewed um, vision of themselves. Well, you know, the, the, I always has called, called the enemy the mind blender, and that's exactly mm-hmm. what he does. He can. How many people have starved themselves to death because no matter how uh, how much they dieted, they looked fat in the mirror when they weren't. They were almost yeah. skull and bones, and. Uh, we we need to we need to begin seeing through the eyes of faith of who we are not what the world says we are not what the enemy says we are not even those around us that are in bondage that say we are cuz the devil always has his choir that wants to jump in there and just harp on exactly I, I mean, we we've had people that we didn't even know walk up and try to reinforce something the devil was trying to was trying to say in different yeah. things and I think we've listened to all these conspiracy theories you meant to say skin and bones I think you said skull and bones skull and bones skin and bones <laughs> uh, Illuminati on the brain guys <laughs> uh, that's my Freudian slip for the day because uh, we'll blame it on skull and bones all right huh. but guys we the the reality is that what the enemy does is he wants to defeat you before you learn your authority. He wants you to feel so defeated that you're never going to pick up the sword of the spirit. He wants you to feel That's so right. defeated that you, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you pray or not. That doesn't change anything. You know what? If it didn't change anything, why is he working so hard to get you not to do it? That's right. He wouldn't waste his time. Wouldn't waste his time. Don't get in the word. You have better things to do. No, you don't. Because if you get in there, you're going to discover who you are. There is, there, there is a perfect law of liberty. And, and, and there's there's such a neat thing that we see in the tabernacle, and I wrote about this in the kingdom priesthood, that when the, the priest would first go to the labor and he would wash his hands and his feet, and it's like going to the word and seeing the things that need to be sacrificed, the lies of the enemy, the sins in our lives. And you go to the brazen altar, 
and you take care of that. When you get back, you're washing again. And when James looked at it, he said, listen, this is the perfect law of liberty. You now see who you are free of what you just offered on the sacrifice altar, Mm. of the lies and the sin that was put on you. You see yourself free. Guys, we need to go to the Word and see ourselves free. We need to see ourselves full of joy. We need to see ourselves as a people that we, when we pray, things happen. That's it. And you know, a powerful prayer, guys, is once you know your authority, once you know, like Luke ten nineteen, it says, we've been given authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Matthew sixteen nineteen. what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. A powerful prayer to say is, I bind the kingdom of darkness from attacking me, influencing me, or using me in Jesus' name. And I loose the power of the kingdom of God to sanctify me wholly, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus. Name. You know, every time you you quote those verses and you do it by memory because you you have committed them to memory. I remember us driving in that old white van with the girls, and you would have them quote that. And after they quote that, they said, "Let me hear a war cry." <laughs> <laughs> you were teaching them to be fighters. Yep. And uh, guys, we need to be taught to be fighters. We need to be taught to that God has called us to be supernatural warriors in the kingdom of God. That we have been given armor. And we have been given the Spirit of God, and we have we have been birthed into a kingdom, and God wants us to enforce his kingdom everywhere we go. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, have you got anything else that you want to share before I, before I close this out today, hon? No, I was just going to tell everybody I love them. Can't wait to meet you and hug your necks at the conferences. <laughs> That's right. Going to preach at you good, love on you good, and feed you good yep. while you're there. That's right. Well, Father, we just thank you for every remnant member that, that listens to this today. And, Father, I just ask that you would just touch their minds, Father. Let the, let the scale fall from their eyes and let them see who, or who they really are in Christ. I command the blinders of the enemy, you, be, you come down, you be broke, never to be put back again in Jesus' name. And, Father, let us be like bloodhounds that can hunt down the lies of the enemy and eradicate them out of our lives so that we can discover who we are in you. You've got tasks for us to do. You have a purpose for us, and that purpose starts out with us being free and us learning our authority and us learning the inheritance that we have in Messiah so that we can be your army in the earth fighting for the souls of men that are doomed to hell unless we proclaim the gospel to them and teach them a better way. Father, let the fire of the kingdom of God fall on your people. Cleanse us and empower us, we ask. In Jesus' name. Hi, friends. Pastor Mike Spaulding here to announce the Go Therefore 2022 conference. We are all witnesses to what has happened to America. Wickedness has overwhelmed our land. It is time for the body of Jesus Christ to come together and raise up the banner of our King. Now is the time for the Ecclesia to make our voice heard. We must bind the strong man in order to reclaim our land. Joining us this year to bring this much-needed clarion call are the following speakers. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, James Spence, founder of Operation Heal America, Dr. John Diamond, host of America Unhinged on Brideon TV, Kenny C., host of The Rock with Kenny C., Derek and Sharon Gilbert, authors and hosts of award-winning programs on Skywatch TV and the PTL Network. Dr. Michael Lake, author of award-winning books, founder of Biblical Life College and Seminary, and host of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. David Hevner, author, accomplished filmmaker and producer, director of The Last Evangelist TV series. Carl Gallups, senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church and a top 60 Amazon best-selling author. Casper McLeod, pastor of Upper Room Fellowship, author, songwriter, guitarist, and portrait artist. Randy Conway, David Paxton, and Rick Hidalgo from the C2K Report. They'll provide a timely teaching on the steps you must take to protect yourself and your family from Babylon. Coach Dave Daubenmeyer from Pass the Salt Ministries. Neil Peterson, pastor of Harvest Revival Center and current candidate for governor of Ohio. Tom Dunn through the Black Ministries. And of course, myself, Dr. Mike Spaulding. Registration is now open at the conference website. GoThereforeConference.com 
gothereforeconference.com. Registration is still only $59. A recommended hotel is the best western Dayton Northwest in Englewood. The hotel is a short 20 minutes from the Dayton International Airport and the conference venue. Mention Go Therefore Conference for the special rate of $89. Book your rooms now as they will sell out. Go Therefore 2022 Conference, reclaiming the land, binding the strongman. I'll see you there. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.